So the point of this video is just to help you understand that scientists can use different types of tools to help them see how molecules interact with each other. And in this case, this particular tool is the idea that you can find 3D structures of proteins and other types of molecules online. And proteins pretty much cover every single uh, important biological molecule from enzymes to antibodies to hormones and other types of molecules that are important and you can use something like this protein data bank here's the link for it you can check it out and one of the things we can actually find uh, look at specifically is the nucleosome if you don't know anything about a nucleosome this none of this rest of stuff is going to make sense to you so you should make sure you understand fully what a nucleosome is all about that it's dna wrapped around this core of histone proteins and you can start to understand how supercoiling can happen uh, because some of these little ends can bind onto each other and pull them closer together. It's quite detailed, especially what you need to know here in the higher level syllabus about nucleosomes. So this really the big picture of this video is to show you that you can use software uh, to help you analyze relationships between different molecules. So for example, I mean, this is not the best diagram. There are other things that I couldn't include on this particular video, but you can actually see the histones at the center of a nucleosome. You can see how the DNA is wrapped around and how it would wrap around based on its uh, interaction um, with positively charged amino acids because uh, DNA is actually negatively charged. So these types of interactions can be revealed. You can also see the N-terminal tails. If you don't know what an N-terminal tail is, that means we're talking about amino acids. And an amino acid, you should be able to draw the structure. An amino acid has an amino end and it has a carboxyl end. And the N-terminal tail will be the end where there's actually a, a nitrogen sticking out and these little tails, maybe something like what you see right here, can actually pull onto other types of tails and interact with each other and help to uh, pull these nucleosomes tighter and closer together. Probably explains why supercoiling is possible and also plays a role in regulating gene expression. In the other video about nucleosomes and the role that nucleosomes play, uh, you'll see this described in a lot more detail. But basically, if these guys right here, pretend like they're holding hands, if they're holding hands and they pull each other in real tight, then you can see that it becomes more difficult to access the DNA that's there. If they loosen up and let go of each other's hands, then this can spread out a little bit and then we can go in and access the DNA. So in this way, uh, nucleosomes can actually help to regulate gene expression. What does regulate gene expression mean? It just means to allow certain genes to be turned on or off. If I need more amylase, I can turn on the transcription and translation of amylase. If I don't, then we can turn that off. And that's called regulating gene expression, turning on gene expression or turning off gene expression. So go check out this site and go spin a bunch of molecules around.